There are about 50 million guides out there teaching you how to play Lifeweaver, and yet it has only been two weeks and people still just quite haven't gotten the grasp of the character, and rightfully so. Instead of giving you the full comprehensive guide on Lifeweaver, let's instead talk about how you should go about playing him in Ranked as he drops today. I've played roughly 20 hours of Lifeweaver across my accounts thus far on him, and have a track record of finishing in top 500 in both Overwatch 1 and Overwatch 2, as well as high-level scrim experience and recent tournament victories alongside the team at Penn State. While Lifeweaver is his own standalone character, a lot of the concepts within his kit are not foreign to the rest of support as a role, so keep that in mind when you're thinking through the abilities. In order to really pop off as Lifeweaver, you first have to understand his general playstyle based on the team that he is surrounded by. Understanding the speed of the composition or the tempo is crucial in order for you to play at your maximum potential. While Lifeweaver has not really been played in pro scrims a whole lot as of late, it is clear where he fits into the roster of Overwatch 2. Lifeweaver's playstyle is defined by his utility, especially his life grip. Lifeweaver allows for a singular character to be incredibly aggressive and look for a pick before being brought back to poke again. Thus, Lifeweaver's tempo is very similar to characters like Ramatra in the sense that Ramatra wants to poke the enemy from range until they are weak enough for him to get close and finish them off. However, in this situation, the Ramatra would get to walk in very early in the fight to chunk down the enemy's health and then get pulled out when his melee form expires just for him to complete the cycle again. This isn't the only way he can be played though. Characters like Reinhardt and Winston are complemented well with his utility as well. For example, with Winston, a big problem for him is that if he commits jump onto a target and does not kill them, he will likely die as a result. Therefore, with Life Grip, this weakness is eliminated from the equation. So the playstyle in this situation as Lifeweaver is much like a double bubble composition in Overwatch 1. Typically, you'd be paired with an Ana that would heal the Winston in order to build Nano incredibly fast. And then finally, you would take the engagement. Before, this was countered by simply not shooting a Winston. But now the Winston can force aggro from the enemy because he'll kill the target he jumps otherwise. As Lifeweaver, this means you should be using the downtime to poke at the enemy to continuously charge your ultimate as fast as possible, but we'll touch more on this a little bit later. With Reinhardt, it's the same idea as Winston, just more map dependent. He can pin in and look for a pick if he chooses to, and then shift his playstyle to shielding his DPS, for example a Bastion, while he gets healed from the damage he took. All of these ways of supporting your team is how Lifeweaver is optimally played. He doesn't do a lot of healing or damage, so you have to make sure you're utilizing that utility effectively as well. Moving on to his healing, however, it is important that you master the optimal strategy surrounding his kit. Every point counts on this character. The most optimal way to heal people to full health right now on Lifeweaver is healing at the 33 mark consistently. However, pure healing isn't always the best way to go about it. His healing can really be helpful at the start of a duel with a DPS. For example, if you see your Tracer or Gen getting ready to duel a support in the back line, you can charge your heal to 65 preemptively and send it in along with them so they have a little bit more effective health to work with throughout the battle. This will win you games if you can master it, as it could be the difference between consistently winning or losing duels. On the flip side, you should be using damage when people don't need healing, aren't looking for duels, or are in the middle of needing to reload. A clip around 26 to 28 bullets left of Thorn Volley equates to a full reload for your healing blossoms, and the more you can weave damage into your game, the more output you will have on top of your already strong utility is Lifeweaver. Speaking of utility though, let's actually discuss that aspect of his kit through the powerful pedal platform. The pedal platform is incredibly powerful the more practice you put into it. It can counter ultimates, give your teammates high ground, or be useful to escape getting overwhelmed when the enemy dives you. Considering that Lifeweaver is a main support, you should already have a pretty good grasp of when people have their ultimates, especially the enemy tank. You can counter Earth Shatter by lifting whomever is up so that the Reinhardt can't swing at them. You can counter Graviton Surge in the same way alongside Meteor Strike as well if you aim it correctly. The same goes for lifting up Orisa as she charges her Terra Surge, and even Blizzard in Death Blossom. The list goes on, so get creative. You do want to avoid its use, however, against ultimates like Bastions. Lifting a target up will actually allow for the bolt from Bastion to fall faster and kill faster as a result. Aside from countering ultimates though, it can also be used for some devastating combos. Cassidy's High Noon can be lifted up to allow sight over corners, creating at least one pick on average per use. That is a big deal. The same goes for Soldier's Visor, or Ash's Bob. This is another use you can get creative with. Maybe you can give your Ana some quick high ground to find an anti-nade behind the enemy Reinhardt's shield, give your sentry form Bastion a sick angle, or even lift up the enemy Rhin so your Rhin gets a free shatter. The possibilities are endless and this ability is so much fun. It is important not to overlook the basic benefits of this ability though. Placing the pedal platform can create pathways for your friendly support to get to a different position on high ground, which has its benefits. It can also be used early in a place that will get you back to your current position if someone jumps you. This is really, really important to 
master. For example, if the enemy team has a Winston and I think he will jump me to take me off of high ground, I will place my pedal platform on the low ground before the fight starts, so that when he jumps me and forces me off of the high ground, I can rotate back up when he drops back down. Lifeweaver is most susceptible to death in situations like this, so it is important to prepare ahead of time. Now for the ability you have all been waiting for, the Life Grip. Most people think this ability is pretty simple, which, well, it can be, but when in combination with other aspects of his kit, it can get pretty tricky. First off, it is important to understand that this ability can allow a teammate to be incredibly aggressive. This means it will share a lot in common with Immortality Field and Protection Suzu. That being said, before you pull someone to save them, it is important you go through this mental checklist first. You should only use this ability when your teammate is in active danger. Just because they are low health doesn't mean that they're in active danger. If I am one health, but I just killed the Genji contributing to a team kill, am I in danger? No, there are no enemies able to aggress onto me. If my entire team gets naded, but the enemy team is down their diva and the Genji doesn't have dash to aggress, is my team in danger? Absolutely not. The same applies to your teammate. If they are in a 1v1 and they are low, but they just won their duel, you do not have to pull them out, as it can allow you to use pull for a different reason later down the road. To build off of this concept, Life Grip can also have aggressive properties as well. You can grip people while they are ulting to provide more mobility to them. This means you can catapult Reaper and Death Blossom to pick off squishies in a linear pattern. Same goes for Pharah as well. This isn't necessarily something you should set up for though, it's just interesting nonetheless. Junkrat can also go for more aggressive tires without the risk of dying, so you know, again, get creative. Aside from that though, you can forcefully make people take high grounds as well in imperative situations. Do you have a gnarly pedal platform angle that you know for a fact could pick up a few kills for your Cassidy mid-high noon? Go for it. The same goes for any other character in the moment. The point I'm trying to make here is that you do not have to use this ability just to save people. You can also use it to reposition teammates to activate them more efficiently throughout the fight. This is a very hard skill to learn, but to be honest, it will most definitely come to you with more playtime. Make sure that you go and practice pulling against different abilities as well though. While it does have aggressive and defensive capabilities, sometimes it can be hard to follow through. For example, in order to save a teammate from a pulse bomb or magnetic grenade, you have to make sure that you pull them out at the right time, as they don't become invincible right away. The same goes for pulling away from a Reinhardt pin. You want to make sure that if you pull the target, the Reinhardt isn't just going to pin a better target. Let's say the enemy Rhine is pinning your Rhine. Make sure that if you save your tank, it isn't going to pull you or another squishy. I've done this before in accident, and while it is funny, it definitely is an instant fight loss. So let's finish off the guy with Lifeweaver's ultimate, the Tree of Life. Lifeweaver's ultimate gets charged extremely fast, so the first tip I have for you is to stop holding on to it forever. It has so many uses within every single fight, it is always my first choice amongst a full team of ultimates. Its first use is to instantly burst heal your team when they are critical. This is a perfect way to win intensely close fights. Most of the time, I use the ultimate in this fashion. Another use of the ultimate though is to block off tight chokes to split the enemy's tank from their team. This will allow you to pick them off first, break the tree if you so choose to, and finish off the rest of the team for a win. I use this pretty sparingly, but it can be extremely helpful in these situations. Lastly, the ultimate can be used to provide cover in completely counter-specific ultimates. Placing the tree in the middle of Sigma's ultimate completely negates it. The same can be done for Maze Blizzard. It can also be helpful against Visor and High Noon. Overall, when the tree is placed, you want to make sure that your team is fighting around it. Charge the ultimate quickly, use it frequently, and you will have a strong influence on the course of the game. So if you were to take anything away from this video, understand that Lifeweaver has much more to his kit than what meets the eye. If you want to climb fast as Lifeweaver, you need to understand the basics of his kit at the very least, and then understand how to get creative and how to take it to the next level. Enable your team with aggressive utility usage, and you'll get there. If you found value in today's video, consider giving the video a like or subscribing to the channel. If you're watching this video close to its release, I am currently streaming an unranked to GM with Lifeweaver only. If that is concluded, you will see a card at the top right of your screen for a recording if you are interested. Otherwise, thank you all so much for watching, but until next time, I've got a peace out and pass out. I'll see you in the next one.